the sinking of the titanic and other great sea disasters edited by logan marshall chapters four and five some of the notable passengers the ship's company was of a character befitting the greatest of all vessels and worthy of the occasion of her maiden voyage though the major part of her passengers were americans returning from abroad there were enrolled upon her cabin list some of the most distinguished names of england as well as of the younger nation many of these had purposely delayed sailing or had hastened their departure that they may be among the first passengers on the great vessel there were aboard six men whose fortunes ran into tens of millions besides many other persons of international note among the men were leaders in the world of commerce finance literature art and the learned professions many of the women were socially prominent in two hemispheres wealth and fame unfortunately are not proof against fate and most of these notable personages perished as pitiably as the more humble steerage passengers the list of notables included colonel john jacob astor head of the astor family whose fortune is estimated at one hundred fifty million dollars isidore strauss merchant and banker fifty million dollars j bruce ismay j bruce ismay managing director of the international mercantile marine forty million dollars benjamin guggenheim head of the guggenheim family ninety five million dollars george d widener son of p a b widener traction magnet and financier five million dollars colonel washington roebling builder of the great brooklyn bridge charles m hayes president of the grand trunk railway w t steed famous publicist jacques Futrelle, journalist harry s harper of the firm harper and brothers henry b harris theatrical manager major archibald butt military aide to president taft and francis d millet one of the best known american painters major butt major archibald butt whose bravery on the sinking vessel will not soon be forgotten was military aide to president taft and was known wherever the president traveled his recent european mission was apparently to call on the pope in behalf of president taft for on march twenty first he was received at the vatican and presented to the pope a letter from mr taft thanking the pontiff for the creation of three new american cardinals major butt had a reputation as a horseman and it is said he was able to keep up with president roosevelt be the ride ever so far or fast he was promoted to the rank of major in 1911. he sailed for the mediterranean on march 2nd with his friend francis d millet the artist who also perished on the titanic colonel astor john jacob astor was returning from a trip to egypt with his 19 year old bride formerly miss madeline force to whom he was married in providence september 9 1911 he was head of the family whose name he bore and one of the world's wealthiest men he was not however one of the world's idle rich for his life of 47 years was a well-filled one he had managed the family estate since 1891 built the astor hotel in new york was colonel on the staff of governor levi p morton and in may of 1898 was commissioned colonel of the united states volunteers after assisting major general breckinridge inspector general of the united states army he was assigned to duty on the staff of major general shafter and served in cuba during the operations ending the surrender of santiago he was also the inventor of a bicycle brake a pneumatic road improver and an improved turbine engine benjamin guggenheim next to colonel astor in financial importance was benjamin guggenheim whose father founded the famous house of m guggenheim and sons when the various guggenheim interests were consolidated into the american smelting and refining company he retired from active business although he later became interested in the power and mining machinery company of milwaukee in 1894 he married miss floretta seligman daughter of james seligman the new york banker 
Isidore Strauss. Isidore Strauss, whose wife elected to perish with him in the ship, was a brother of Nathan and Oscar Strauss, a partner with Nathan Strauss in R. H. Macy and Company, and L. Strauss and Sons, a member of the firm of Abraham and Strauss in Brooklyn, and has been well known in politics and charitable work. He was a member of the 53rd Congress from 1893 to 1895, and as a friend of William L. Wilson, was in constant consultation in the matter of the former Wilson Tariff Bill. Mr. Strauss was conspicuous for his works of charity and was an ardent supporter of every enterprise to improve the condition of the Hebrew immigrants. He was president of the Educational Alliance, vice president of the J. Hood Wright Memorial Hospital, a member of the Chamber of Commerce, on one of the visiting committees of Harvard University, and was besides a trustee of many financial and philanthropic institutions. Mr. Strauss never enjoyed a college education. He was, however, one of the best informed men of his day, his information having been derived from extensive reading. His library, said to be one of the finest and most extensive in New York, was his pride and his place of special recreation. George D. Widener The best known of Philadelphia passengers aboard the Titanic were Mr. and Mrs. George D. Widener. Mr. Widener was a son of Peter A. B. Widener and, like his father, was recognized as one of the foremost financiers of Philadelphia, as well as a leader in society there. Mr. Widener married Miss Eleanor Elkins, a daughter of the late William L. Elkins. They made their home with his father at the latter's fine place at Eastburn, 10 miles from Philadelphia. Mr. Widener was keenly interested in horses and was a constant exhibitor at horse shows. In business, he was recognized as his father's chief advisor in managing the latter's extensive traction interests. P.A.B. Widener is a director of the International Mercantile Marine. Mrs. Widener is said to be the possessor of one of the finest collections of jewels in the world, the gift of her husband. One string of pearls in this collection was reported to be worth $250,000. The Wideners went abroad two months previous to the disaster, Mr. Widener desiring to inspect some of his business interests on the other side. At the opening of the London Museum by King George on March 21st, last it was announced that Mrs. Widener had presented to the museum 30 silver plates, once the property of Neil Gwynn. Mr. Widener is survived by a daughter, Eleanor, and a son, George D. Widener. Junior Harry Elkins Widener was with his parents and went down with the ship. Colonel Roebling Colonel Washington Augustus Roebling was president of the John A. Roebling Sons Company, manufacturers of iron and steel wire rope. He served in the Union Army from 1861 to 1865, resigning to assist his father in the construction of the Cincinnati and Covington Suspension Bridge. At the death of his father in 1869, he took entire charge of the construction of the Brooklyn Bridge, and it is said to his genius that the success of that great work may be said to be due. William T. Steed one of the most notable of the foreign passengers was William T. Steed. Few names are more widely known to the world of contemporary literature and journalism than that of the brilliant editor of the Review of Reviews. Matthew Arnold called him the inventor of the new journalism in England. He was on his way to America to take part in the Men and Religion Forward movement and was to have delivered an address in Union Square on the Thursday after the disaster, with William Jennings Bryan as his chief associate. Mr. Steed was an earnest advocate of peace and had written many books. His commentary, If Christ Came to Chicago, raised a storm 20 years ago. When he was in this country in 1907, he addressed a session of Methodist clergymen and at one juncture of the meeting remarked that unless the Methodists did something about the peace movement besides shouting amen, nobody would care a damn about their amens. Other Englishmen aboard. Other distinguished Englishmen on the Titanic were Norman C. Craig, MP, Thomas Andrews, 
a representative of the firm of Harland and Wolf of Belfast, the ship's builders, and J. Bruce Ismay, managing director of the White Star Line. J. Bruce Ismay. Mr. Ismay is president and one of the founders of the International Mercantile Marine. He has made it a custom to be a passenger on the maiden voyage of every new ship built by the White Star Line. It was Mr. Ismay who, with J.P. Morgan, consolidated the British steamship lines under the International Mercantile Marine's control, and it is largely due to his imagination that such gigantic ships as the Titanic and the Olympic were made possible. Jacques Futrell. Jacques Futrell was an author of short stories, some of which have appeared in the Saturday Evening Post, and of many novels of the same general type as The Thinking Machine, with which he first gained a wide popularity. Newspaper work, chiefly in Richmond, Virginia, engaged his attention from 1890 to 1909, in which year he entered the theatrical business as a manager. In 1904, he returned to his journalistic career. Henry B. Harris. Henry B. Harris, the theater manager, had been manager of May Irwin, Peter Daly, Lily Langtree, Amelia Bingham, and launched Robert Edison as star. He became the manager of the Hudson Theater in 1903 and the Hackett Theater in 1906. Among his best known productions are The Lion and the Mouse, The Traveling Salesman, and The Third Degree. He was president of the Henry B. Harris Company, controlling the Harris Theater. Young Harris had a liking for the theatrical business from a boy. Twelve years ago, Mr. Harris married Miss Renee Wallach of Washington. He was said to have a fortune of between one million and three million dollars. He owned outright the Hudson and the Harris theaters and had an interest in two other show houses in New York. He owned three theaters in Chicago, one in Syracuse and one in Philadelphia. Henry S. Harper. Henry Sleeper Harper, who was among the survivors, is a grandson of John Wesley Harper, one of the founders of Harper Publishing Business. H. Sleeper Harper was himself an incorporator of Harper and Brothers when the firm became a corporation in 1896. He had a desk in the offices of the publishers, but his hand of late years in the management of the business has been very slight. He has been active in the work of keeping the Adirondack forests free from aggression. He was in the habit of spending about half of his time in foreign travel. His friends in New York recall that he had a narrow escape about 10 years ago when a ship in which he was traveling ran into an iceberg on the Grand Banks. Francis David Millet Millet was one of the best known American painters and many of his canvases are found in the leading galleries of the world. He served as a drummer boy with the 60th Massachusetts Volunteers in the Civil War and from early manhood took a prominent part in public affairs. He was director of the decorations for the Chicago Exposition and was, at the time of the disaster, secretary of the American Academy in Rome. He was a wide traveler and the author of many books besides translations of Tolstoy. Charles M. Hayes. Another person of prominence was Charles Melville Hayes, president of the Grand Trunk and the Grand Trunk Pacific Railways. He was described by Sir Wilfrid Laurier at a dinner of the Canadian Club of New York at the Hotel Astor last year as beyond question the greatest railroad genius in Canada, as an executive genius ranking second only to the late Edward H. Harriman. He was returning aboard the Titanic with his wife and son-in-law and daughter, Mr. and Mrs. Thornton Davidson of Montreal.